All right, everybody. Yo, 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 yo. What's going on? It is Friday afternoon. Kaplan and crew, by the way, SD Cap is back. Played LA Cap for three days. SD Cap is back in his own house today. Really happy to be here. And we're going to finish this week like a motherfucker, man. I'm telling you right now, this show today is going to be one for the ages. I'm, we're going to probably wind up having to cut this up into pieces and put it all out there on YouTube because it's going to be amazing. Starting off, these guys right here, Athletic Greens. How do you get through a week in Vegas like Alex's, uh, a week in LA like I've been, especially dealing with all this rain? And yesterday, I'm telling you, I was around thousands and thousands of people, not just at the game last night between the Lakers and the Nuggets, but between the whole Kobe ceremony yesterday. I'm around thousands of people shaking hands, hugging it out, touching people. You got to have the stuff that takes care of your body. Athletic Greens AG1. Use our, our QR code right here, ag1.com, athleticgreens.com slash Kaplan, but use our QR code right here. And um, you got to get a subscription to this. I take it every day. I take it with me. When you buy through us the five free travel packs, the one-year supply of vitamin D, which I know I'm deficient in, you're going to get those vitamins, those minerals, nutrients, superfoods, and probiotics all in one little packet every day. It's going to cost you less than a cup of coffee, and we're all going to get healthy together. Athletic Greens dot com slash Kaplan AG one QR code right here. All right, let's keep rolling. Uh, let me talk to everybody here for a minute about what you're doing on Sunday. If you don't have plans yet for Sunday, let's talk about maybe going to seven mile casino, seven mile casino.com blackjack poker, other table games, amazing food, great bar scene, seven minutes South of downtown San Diego, no smoking, great parking. Y you got it all at 7 Mile Casino. 7milecasino.com, any problems with gambling? You call 1-800-GAMBLER. Okay, let me talk to you about something else this weekend. You better get the Tory Holistics and California Holistics and load up, okay, because you're going to want to have some fun this weekend. And if you use cannabis products for sleep, I have not been sleeping well at all this week. If you use cannabis products for sleep, if you use it for pain, if you use, if you use a topical rub because something's bothering you in your, in your body, uh, or you just like to use it recreationally, Cannabis products can be found lots of places in San Diego, but there's one place that gives you the 20% discount, our promo code BETTERBUD. But then after you use our promo code BETTERBUD for 20%, then you go back the second time, they give you 30%. Then you go back the third time, they'll give you 35% off. They're making it easy and they're giving you a lot of incentive to go to Tory Holistics and California Holistics. And lastly, let me mention our friends at Prize Picks, prizepicks.com slash great friends, prizepicks.com slash great friends. They're giving you Patrick Mahomes at a half a yard in the big game on Sunday, half a yard passing. So chalk that one up. That one you're going in on. Then you got to start figuring it out. I know for me, they've got Travis Kelsey as a half a touchdown scored. Check. I'm going in on that one. No problem. There are so many amazing plays. But then the football scene is going to end and we're going all in on basketball. Last night, I had a huge play going with six players. D'Angelo Russell didn't play, so then it got down to five. And then I just I, I just couldn't get lucky. LeBron scored for me. Anthony Davis scored for me. I played more on points, rebounds, and assists on Jokic. That didn't happen for me. So I'm going all in on basketball. But first, I'm going to win it all this upcoming Sunday. I'm going to load up my account this upcoming Sunday. If you haven't made your first deposit, they match 100% up to $100. So make sure you make that first deposit. You can use Apple Pay on your phone. And you get into, like I am, and like Alex is, and Browner is, 7 million other people as well playing prize picks, prizepicks.com slash great friends. All right, let's do this. Let's get to it. We got an amazing show coming your way. And at halftime, I'll have more for you. Stick around. Hey, great friends. What's going on? It is Friday afternoon. As a matter of fact, let me say, and perhaps we should all say it together. <laughs> It's Friday. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, I need Friday so bad. Holy mackerel, man. Uh, we've got a great show coming up today. We have got a monster show. We're in the Seven Mile Casino studio, sevenmilecasino.com. Alex is on Radio Row in Las Vegas. Browner is in North Park at the crib running this entire operation. I've been in L.A. the last three days, and yesterday was the Kobe statue unveiling. And now L.A. Cap is back in SD. Now he's back to SD Cap, and we got an amazing show. Here's what's scheduled today. Comedian Burt Kreischer, who's got a big show happening in Vegas 
uh, tonight. Uh, Bert Kreischer will be here, in, I think. He's about to sit down. Okay. Bert Kreischer is going to be here. Want to get Ak started? Yeah. Akbar Baja Biamila is going to be here. Um, who am I missing, Alex? I'm trying to remember who I'm missing. We got other stuff planned for today. So, all right, hold on. Comedian Bert Kreischer. This guy is like, hold on. Here's Bert Kreischer. He's coming to sit Put him on the screen. Let's just let's just throw him up on the screen. Okay. Here we go. Hey, Bert. What's going on, man? How are you, sir? Ooh, All right, here we go. I'm doing hey, man. amazing. Yeah, dude. How are things good for you? Yeah, where are you guys at? Well, I'm in, in San Diego. I've been in LA the last three days for this Kobe Bryant statue unveiling. Did you see any of that on Sports Center? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Got nothing. Sorry. On, I've been drinking you know? pretty aggressively. I've been drinking pretty aggressively. I heard nice. you were drinking already, like earlier today. You were drinking with McAfee TV. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was doing some shots over there. I went over to Kay Adams. This is awesome over here, man. I wish you guys were here. This is amazing. Yeah, dude. This is like the first Super Bowl I've missed since about 1997. But uh, duty called. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we yeah. got half the show there. You know? Um, hey, dude, hey, listen. You, it's it, go ahead. Sorry. You, you. My son is 23 years old. You are his favorite, favorite, favorite comedian, dude. I'm not his son. No, 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 no. no. Okay. I, I, no okay. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking at your skin tone. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, that's why I dye my hair because I want people to think that we're brothers, dude. My son is 23 years old. He's freaking out right now that you're on the show because, like, for for him, you are for him what like George Carlin was for me. You know, buddy. Um, buddy uh, my, my career has been made by the sons of great men. I'm being serious when I say that. My movie at Legendary, uh, shout out to Josh, who runs Legendary. His son was a fan of mine and pulled me pulled me aside at the premiere of Jurassic Park just randomly and was like, I got introduced to my dad. And I was like, hey, I met his dad. He goes, I run Legendary. Let's do a movie. Next thing you know, we're making the machine. I have so many stories like that. God bless those sons. Shout out to the boys. <laughs> That's why I, I'm still doing Zins, because the boys do Zins. I've been very, very, very blessed. blessed. So thank were you, you son. Were you chugging beers at McAfee right now? Yeah. Where are the beers at? Oh, we're drinking vodka today. We oh, just launched a vodka. vodka. Let's do yeah. it. Oh, dude. We'll do a little shot. Yeah, I'll do a shot. Oh, yeah. 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 Alex, yeah, yeah, Alex. We, we, own, we own this station. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, dude. Don't worry about it. You can do whatever you want on this station. Really we matter. own this thing. All right. Kreischer's now doing... Shots of vodka. Oh my you care? god! Smooth, dude. Yeah, get in yeah there. share get in there. swamp spit, get bro. In get it, Alex. So, ooh, get here's the, here's, here's yeah, the like story. We're storm that, in Moscow oh, back, back in the <laughs> 1930s. <laughs> Outside the city, they burned it to the ground. You know the you know the Russians burned it to the ground, right? How, what a gangster move, right? Napoleon rolls into Moscow. I'm so sorry. I am hammered, and I'm a dude, history guy. This is dude, the best. Napoleon rolls, Napoleon rolls into Moscow, and he's like. Yo, we're taking the city. You know what they did? They took everyone and moved them to St. Petersburg. And then you know what they did? They burned Moscow to the ground. The Russians burned Moscow to the ground. And Napoleon came out and was like, hold on. Who did this? And they were like, they did. Gangsters. That's why we drink vodka. I got to so, ask. So I watched your movie. That's a true story. You were yeah, in the Russian that's why mob. I went, no, uh, well, I wasn't. Well, yeah, yeah, I was in the Russian mob. The, uh, that's the reason it went viral is that one of the women... That was on oh she was a young lady at the time was on that trip when i posted that story on facebook she commented in the comments one of the first comments out she wrote i was uh on this trip to russia i was in his class this story is 100 percent true he robbed us and then that made it go viral shout out to uh kristen hodgson out of minnesota i know a lot about her now <laughs> <laughs> so one of the one of the things i <clears throat> when we were finally we were going to have you i wanted to ask you about so you're doing your own stage. I can't remember where you were at, but Natasha uh, Legault was after you. Legero, N Natasha yeah, Legero. Thank you. I got to give her props because it's one of the best things I've ever seen in my entire life. First of all, so, let's get let's get in the weeds about this. Go, Alex. Wait, we just lost we just lost Bert. He just his audio just went down. I don't know if he pulled out the plug or if he if he muted. I'm not sure. But hold on, wait. We're talking to comedian Bert Kreischer. Browner, you're asking. Uh, Bert, about a female comedian that came on after him, yes. right? And and Bert was just about to get into this story. All right, go for it, dude. Oh, gosh, damn it. Legere. Oh, there we go. Go ahead, you're back, you're back. Go ahead, you're back. Okay. Natasha Legere, her husband, Moshe Kasher, I know them very well. Natasha, they, they have a baby. They're And, like, Natasha is, like, age-appropriate. She's my wife's age, a little younger, probably. 
So I go on stage, I rip my shirt off, I do my set, and then Natasha comes up. She is in, oh, she's wearing overalls and a white shirt. I don't know this is going on. She comes up, no bra, no bra. I, and I'm, it's going to sound creepy, but let's just let it be what it is. Rips it off, takes her shirt off. So, so beautiful. I mean, I got to be honest with you, as a man married to a 53 year old woman, and Natasha is probably 42. Oh, brother. Nice. Her, I, I'm telling you. And then decided to destroy for 12 minutes. Destroyed topless in a comedy club. Topless in a comedy club for 12 minutes. Talked about being a mom, about breastfeeding. It was out of this world. I was over the side like a 12-year-old boy going, shut up, shut up. <laughs> Man, she, she, st she stole my thunder. And then Jason Kelsey rips his shirt off at the Chiefs game. He steals my thunder. I'm like, dude, I came up with the shirt off thing. God, man. You need to, you need to trademark it. You need to trademark the shirt off. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, yeah, it's uh, – but, yeah, that was, a, that was a really cool moment. I'm really blessed to be around such coolness in my life. I hung out with Jason Kelsey last night, and uh, we're getting him to come to our show at the MGM Grand Garden Arena, Secret Time, and uh, he's going to come up. Tom's going to introduce him as me, and he's going to rip his shirt off before I go on stage. It's oh, going to be awesome. Nice. Nice. Yeah, dude, don't I, tell I, anybody, I, but yeah. <laughs> I got to ask. So uh, you went to Florida State, right? Yeah, yeah. And Florida State is like total party school. I'm from Florida. I mean, everybody I went to high school with went to Florida State, you know. Where? Where uh, Where in Florida? I'm from Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I was going to say Stewart. Yeah, no, I'm Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> <laughs> what, what makes you think I'm from Stewart? Come on. I, I feel I'm like looking I at your haircut. I'm looking at your haircut. It's it's not south <laughs> enough to be cool. It's just north enough to get a little bit of cultural influence to it. I got you. <laughs> so, so everybody I went to high school with went to Florida State, right? And Florida State was the party school to go to, bro, right? So I'm just curious, yeah. like, what, what happened in your collegiate experience that formed this shirt-off stand-up comedian act? You know, honestly, I swear to God, there's a radio guy in Tampa named Mike Calta. He used to be called Cowhead. And I remember I used to take my shirt off when I go on stage and, and just I'd take it off, rip it off, kill a beer, listen to Black Betty when I walked on stage, and then I'd throw it back on. And I remember I did my first special, Comfortably Dumb, and I said, what do you think? He's a good friend, one of my best friends. He said, I didn't like it. I said, why not? And he goes, I don't know, man. It's not who you are, the guy with the collar shirt. You're the guy that rips his shirt off. And as he said that, I went, I will never be some corporate shill again. I'll do whatever I want to do. And I made a mistake. I ripped my shirt off when I did my Showtime special. No one watched it because obviously I took my shirt off. They changed channel. But when that machine story went viral, I was known as a shirtless guy. And it was in a weird way. It was back. I backed into good marketing. And, uh, and, and it makes me more comfortable, man. Florida, when, in Florida, when you're excited at a Hooters and John Daly walks in, <laughs> you rip your shirt off. You rip your shirt off. That's how tonight today goes. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. We got we got buffalo. We got wings coming in, and that's how you celebrate. And so I think I think I'm the ultimate Florida guy. Really, did I? So uh, you, oh, go ahead, Brown. Go ahead, because Browner here. Are, Browner here is, a, is an aspiring comedian, by the way. To me, this is my next David Chappelle right here, and I'm managing this fool because I'm like, there ain't no way you're doing this radio show for all these years, and then I'm not making some money off this thing. This guy's going to be a superstar. Exploitation still alive, brother. From Florida, you know how it is. Exploitation <laughs> still alive. All right, Brown. Bert's yeah. got two minutes, so go ahead, man. So when you are starting in your career, how often did you try? How often did you go up? Did you were, were you one of these people who worked at a comedy club, or were you one of these people who just grinded out from stop to stop? No, I got a job working the door at a place called the Boston Comedy Club on West Third, and I barked. I stood in front of the club. I brought people in. If I brought 25 people in, I could go on stage after a guy named Godfrey, who's a gangster. He's one of the funniest dudes in the world. And so, uh, yeah, that's how I, I got on stage every night. And then right now I'm getting ready for a special, and I'm shooting in, Tam in Tampa in July. And right now my motto is get on stage every single night. you got to be on stage every single night. And even the nights this suck and nothing happens and you don't come up with something new, you find a word or two that flows and then they get into the act and and it's just about putting in the work it's like digging a hole man you gotta put the shovel into the ground you can't dig a hole and not dig it you gotta put the shovel into the ground and and that's how right now i'm on stage every single night damn damn to know. uh bert kreischer dude um, buddy i'm I've on stage every single night and i will say this i'm a millionaire like if i'm doing that you gotta do it like that's how it works is dave Chappelle 
has more money than all of us. I know how much that guy grosses in his tours. He's on stage every single night. Kevin Hart on stage every single night. If you don't think, if you think you're better than them, then sure, don't get on stage every single night. But if you think you're worse than them, you better try to double up your spots. Do three, do a hat trick at the store every night you can. Comedy store in La Jolla, man. That's where that's where we're working this stuff out. Seriously. Yeah. It's a great club. Yeah. It's it a is. great club. It really and is. And San Diego is good for clubs now because they're like five clubs here locally. Uh, American like Comedy downtown. Company. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, San Diego is a hotspot. Well, uh, California is a hotspot. I don't care what Rogan says. Everyone's moving to Austin. But Cal Southern California is a great place for comedy. Irvine Improv, Brea Improv, Ontario yes. Improv. Yes. LA's got five clubs. San Diego's got five clubs. Buddy. Get on stage. I can't wait to see you blow up. I am, Let me tell you something. When you do, I'll be the first to give you your flowers. My man. Dude, hey, so much appreciation for you saying that, man. Because, listen, this is how we learn. I'm not joking, man. This is how we learn. Bert, um, I can't tell you how many young people come to me and say, hey, man, um, can I get a picture for my dad? Because these kids have been listening for 20 years, and their dads yeah. are fans, not the kids are fans. So what you said at the beginning resonates. Brother, appreciate you. Have a great show this weekend in Vegas. Thank you. You're freaking awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless. I'll see you guys. Yes, sir. All right, brother. My man, homeboy. Dude, that is so cool, Browner. That is so cool. See, this is how we do it. We Everybody else wants to talk about all the movies and stand-up. No, no I, I love when you ask questions like this. You mm -hmm. know? And, dude, he's right, man. You Because here's the thing. This past Sunday night up in Pasadena, Freaking Lawhead got on stage like three times in the same night at the same club. Sebastian Manikowsko, I, I hope I'm saying his last name right. He's hilarious. Sebastian brought him up on stage one time. Howie Mandel brought him up on stage another time. And he's up there just working it. And I know it's hard, man, when you got kids like you've got. But, dude, you got it, man. You got what it takes. Boy, that was fun, man. Dude, so did I just take a shot of vodka with Burt Kreischer? Yeah, right and you didn't, like, wipe off, you, yeah, you didn't wipe off the bottle or anything. No, no. we got the I'm whole thing. Sure. We got the whole thing. Yeah. Dude, you're a man. We're going to get something on my on my mouth tomorrow. You man. are a man. Your eyes are squinty, and you have a smile on your face. You're, you're a man. Yeah. I mean, I stopped drinking at 2 a.m., so. Yeah. You're just hey, I, told Brown, hey, I, I heard Browner, and I, I heard Browner yesterday, and I was like, you know what? There's no basketball. You're right. He's right. Today. Right. Yeah. yeah, man. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You're in a, you're in a proper place to be doing so. So I'm so glad we just did that. My son's going to lose his mind. My daughters yesterday lost their mind on Bobby Flay. They, Bobby they, Flay was good. They don't care. Right. They don't care. And by the way, the guy we were talking about, Doug Ellen, who was the producer and the writer and the creator of Entourage, Doug got the video of Bobby talking about what Alex talked about yesterday, which is where uh, Bobby called Ari's wife her name in the show, not Mrs. Ari. And dude, Doug reposted it on his Instagram. Uh, oh, nice. So yeah, so we we were picking up a lot of views on the whole Bobby Flay thing yesterday. But like my daughters, they don't care about anything other than Bobby Flay. They're not going to care about Akbar Baja Biamila, who who you know, I mean, he's more famous for for you know less about football and more about American Ninja, Ninja Warriors. Warriors. And then and then you know they're not going to care so much about Antonio Gates getting snubbed by the Hall of Fame. And Antonio's still planning to come on the show today. Is that right, Alex? Supposed to be on here in about five minutes. We'll see what happens. Dude, let me tell you something. Antonio Gates got so snubbed. And yesterday we were having this conversation about, is he going to get snubbed? Because Antonio had told a friend of ours that he was getting snubbed, right? And you know, a lot of people hit me up yesterday and said, you're forgetting that Antonio Gates was suspended in his career for steroid use. And I'm like, A, I did forget that. And B, yep. I don't believe that's what played a role in it. I don't believe that. I do. Do you really? I do. Really? See, and, and, here's the, 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 and here's the thing. I think that people take offense to that for other people. I don't, I don't necessarily think the players cared that much about it because he had such a long, dominant career that that is something that was such a small blip, but people never forget. That wasn't the reason he was good. And, that, and to me, that's the argument. Whenever that gets thrown in, the person automatically gets dinged regardless of the sport. When in actuality, he was good his entire career. He wasn't good while he was on it or post that. He was good his entire career. So it, it's a it's such a mixed bag, man. But once that came, once that came up into our conversation, it totally made sense to me. Yeah. There's no other reason to keep him out. Hey, you know what's funny? The guy that gave me the intel from Gates 
we talked about that this morning. He was here next to me, and we were like, you know what? It's probably because he got popped for roids. Like, yeah, there there has to be no other explanation. None. Like you you can't put a dude that got popped for roids as a first ballot Hall of Famer. It had it had to be a conversation in the room. It had to he be. was better than he was better than Andre Johnson. And Andre Johnson had a great career. And respect to him and congratulations. He was better than Andre Johnson. And I and I will tell you that when I looked at Andre Johnson, because we had this conversation yesterday, and it was all like yeah. all, all off the top of our head. You know, do you think this person's in? Do you think that person's in? And I, I remember hearing Andre Johnson, and I was thinking to myself, well, he was really good. But, man, I don't think he's like first ballot kind of Hall of Famer. I don't even know if he was on the first ballot. I'm not even sure. Mm-hmm. But, man, I, I, I'm, I'm offended on behalf of Antonio Gates, and I'm offended on behalf of the old school San Diego Charger fans who are also pissed off and upset and think like what you guys brought up yesterday, which is this is the typical disrespect of having played in San Diego, having, having all the stats, but none of the wins having played for the Spanos family, which is not gates by the way. So, all right, what are we going to do about the, um, I think we keep rolling here. If you can wait, keep rolling, want to keep rolling. We'll stop and then keep going. Um, That's a good idea. That's yes. actually right. that's actually me, a very good idea. Get, let me get just tell Antonio, that. tell Antonio what we're about to do though. If you can just prepare him, tell him we're going to talk for about three minutes or so, and then we'll hit the break, and then we'll come right back. Just prepare him. Okay. Um, for those of you that are with us, Antonio Gates is about to join us. Before he does, I want to just have a minute here to tell you about Prize Picks because the football season is going to end this Sunday. When the football season ends, man, we're going hardcore into basketball. Prizepicks.com slash great friends prizepicks.com slash great friends. If you've not made that first deposit yet, you can click our QR code right here, or you can just use your phone uh, for Apple pay and get into the prize picks, go to the app prizepicks.com. And our code is great friends. And you got to make sure you use that. Cause that's how they know that, that you guys are following along. All these places this weekend, Patrick Mahomes, half a yard passing gift. It's a 99% discount. It's a gift. I'm playing Isaiah Pacheco. Cause he's one for me every week. So use that one as well. And then send me what you're doing. Send me what you're playing on Prize Picks. PrizePicks.com slash great friends. They match your first deposit 100% up to 100 bucks. You put 100 bucks in this weekend, you'll have 200 to play with. The big game is Sunday. This is our last football game of the season. Then we're going to go hardcore basketball. All right. Is, is Antonio Gates, what's so, the situation? He's got a strict time. So let's, okay. We're, we're going to have to pause this or edit this and then we'll. He's got to go though. So let's okay. let's go so to let's, the next. Let's, we'll okay. Okay. All right. All right. Hold everybody stay yeah. right. Hold on. We're going to pause this. Okay. All right. So hold on a second. So we we were pausing. Everybody who's watching this, you here you're watching how we do this, okay? And and I love to actually show you guys this. So I have no problem. That's why we're not editing this. So we're having this conversation cuz Gates is about to come over. Okay? But he has a very limited amount of time. So if we keep going we're going to screw up the whole show for the day. So we actually pushed a timeout, paused it. Gates is coming up in the next segment. Okay. And that's, and and now we actually had to come back here because we had the final two minutes of the segment. So, which, which is fine, but it gives me one chance. Hey guys, last night on prize picks, Brown, or listen to this. I tried to go with one of your plays last night. I had LeBron James to go more than 24 and a half. He had 25. I had Anthony Davis to go more than 24 and a half. He had 32. I had Jamal Murray to go more than 23 and a half. He had 29. I had Jokic to go for more than 48 and a half total. He had 46 points, rebounds, and assists. He had 46 total. So he came up shorter, 45. I had Aaron Gordon to go less on fantasy points, and he went more. Um, And and then I had D'Angelo Russell, and he didn't play. But you know what's interesting is I went three for five, and I had a $20 play, and it actually came back and paid me eight bucks. So I didn't because lose you, it all. You you reboot it. They rebooted right. the Antonio, uh, the the Anthony, uh, the, the Angelo Russell. Russell. Yeah, yeah, they rebooted it for me. All right, now you mm-hmm. can see Alex is struggling with his internet there at, at Radio Row. Okay, so look, here's what we're gonna do. Um, pull me on. Yeah, pull him down and pull me on. All right, look, here's what we're gonna do. Um, coming up next, Antonio Gates. Charger fans are very offended that Antonio Gates did not make it to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. We're going to ask him the questions. Why? Was it about playing in San Diego? Was it about not winning Super Bowls? Was it about a steroid suspension? Antonio Gates, next from Radio Road. This is Kaplan and Crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios.
All right, great friends. We've been talking about this man all week long here on Kaplan and Crew. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Antonio Gates, the former Charger great, is back on Kaplan and Crew. Antonio, I want to jump right into it. First of all, always great to see you. That big smile of yours. How are you, my man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Where is uh where where are you living at nowadays? I'm in Los Angeles, you know. Yeah. My coast, so back forth, Michigan, Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how about those Detroit Lions this year? I know that's your hometown I team. I know. It is. It is. I was so excited to see them make that leap. And uh, I mean, the city was just supportive and have always been supportive. So uh, to see them, you know, continue to get better and then obviously win the first playoff game, then win the second one. I, I can't tell you how proud I am to be a Detroit native. And at the same time, I, you know, I felt like they had enough to get here to Super Bowl. Uh, but I do know getting back to this point is never easy. Uh, so I just hope they keep grinding and keep getting better as a team. And uh, I, know, I know the city of Detroit will always support them no matter what. Yeah, I, I mean, I just remember Detroit being such a part of your story. And, you know, I was saying all week, Antonio, for me, I'm very emotionally attached to your playing career. I saw you come in as an undrafted free agent. I told the guys, I remember, I think, your first game where you really, really played late in your rookie season against Jacksonville, where you're running mm. against the sideline and you get smacked and fumble. But that's Fumbled. because yeah, you, yeah, your yeah. body was not yet conditioned to be an NFL player. And then yeah. I got to see your entire career. And I say you revolutionized the tight end position. So I've been on the air all week saying Antonio Gates is going into the Hall of Fame. I'm shocked that you didn't get in. I want to ask you, because I know all of our audience feels the same way. In your estimation, why do you suppose, I mean, just a theory, a, a guess, why do you suppose you didn't make it in this first time? Yeah, you know, you. I think one thing about, you know, life in itself, uh, you know, time is everything for the most part. Uh, you know, I, I felt that I've done everything that I could possibly do that was in my control. Uh, and I think it, it was... Um, it's for one, it's a humbling experience, and it's, it's sometimes it's frustrating to know not to not really have an answer. Uh, you know, what I mean, I don't really know the answer, but what I do know is that the people who've supported me and been around me the whole time throughout my whole journey, uh, I mean, we were really looking forward toward going in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and that's a very, very unique group of guys, elite group. And uh, so, like I said, man, you know, kudos to the guys that got in, and I don't really want to take away from what they've done in this space, and they're deserving of that, but. I, you know, I felt like I, I did as much as I can when I played. And um, it's one of those things where, you you know, you have success and then sometimes you don't. But the next day I get up and I, I keep moving forward towards my goal. And I think, uh, you know, my destination is, you know, fortunately one day be a pro football Hall of Famer. No question about it. And I was telling the guys, I mean, again, I'm emotionally attached to, to your playing career because I saw it from the beginning to the very end. And I can think of games, and I wonder if you could kind of bring back some of these memories. I can remember when the Chargers were just starting to get good. Breeze is still the quarterback. And there were two games in particular at Qualcomm Stadium that I think of. One was against New Orleans, and one was against the Raiders. And I can't remember off the top of my head if you scored five touchdowns or if he threw five <laughs> touchdowns. But, like, those two games were, were kind of early on. Do, do those stick out to you at all? What, what do you remember? Well, I just remember it being a uh, – at the time, I didn't really understand what I was doing. But it, it was like a – you know – creating a wave for the position um, because scoring touchdowns at that position was not normal. And I remember coming into the lead and just everything I had, I was gifted God, my God given ability. We were doing it and it was just like really in a sense, never really been done. But obviously, you know, the Keller Winslow's and the Tony Gonzalez's of the world, they, they were a part of that. So, uh, but I do remember just, you know, finding ways to do things and i was just you know shocked that they would call on a basketball player to do it you know what i mean yeah. that's the honest god opinion i was doing things and it was just like rebounding and i remember you know marty scheinheimer at the time the late great marty scheinheimer uh he would always say things to me but me not really truly understanding what man you you, you ever knew who ozzy newsom is you, you trust me you're gonna be better than him you know, and I just be like, who's Isaac Newsom? <laughs> right at the time, I wasn't even sure who he was. Right. And just to see, uh, the you know, the city of San Diego, the the Chargers community, what that instilled that confidence in me to be uh, the number one guy in the passing game, coming from a basketball background. Um, to me, that range. 
first of all, when you come in the lead as a free agent, it's always hard enough to make the team, right? Right, right. I actually started as a rookie. So to go from a free agent to making a team to start to Pro Bowls, and now obviously I was up for the Hall of Fame this year. I mean, it's just an unbelievable journey, man. It's an unbelievable story. And there's so many people who played a major role in that. So I, I can't really – I'm still wrapping my head around it all, man, to be perfectly honest yeah. with you, man. It's so many things that's transpiring. There's so many different angles. Uh, you know, now I have to answer these questions about why you didn't get in. Yeah. You know, so. And it sucks. You know uh, why, Antonio? Yeah, it sucks. It, it because, sucks. Because yeah. here's, here's why. Because some people will go, well, it's in San Diego. He played in San Diego. Um, they, they made it to the AFC Championship game. He was hurt with a turf toe in that game. He was more of a decoy and less of a, produ a you know, less productive. You know, uh, LT was sitting on the bench in that game. Uh, Rivers became the warrior in that game. So that's, he. they didn't win. Okay, he had all the stats. They didn't win. Then yesterday, somebody told me this. He had a steroid suspension. I go, I, yeah. I forgot completely about that. It yeah, has nothing yeah, to do with it. And, yeah, and so, yeah. so that's no, what people that's are saying. It pisses me off, man. Yeah, I, I, I will say this based on the, the suspension. I, I, you know, unfortunately in life, things happen, things occur. Um, since I was 12 years old, I've been the number one player. Uh, I started as a freaking free agent. Do you know the, the, the degree of difficulty to start in the NFL? More importantly, to start as a free agent more importantly to start as a basketball player. So like, you got to think of like the things that I had to overcome uh, in the uphill battle. For one, to get the opportunity to start as a free agent, it's hard because you got your draft picks, you got your, you know what I mean? The guys that they know about. And then you, you got to take in consideration, I didn't have a football background. So I had to be doing something, you know what I'm saying? That was yes. out of the norm for me to even yes. have that opportunity. Right. And I and I and I, when I think about the, the National Football League, which is an unbelievable league, when I think about the Pro Football Hall of Fame, which is an unbelievable group of people, the elite of the elite, uh, I think about the degree of difficulty and how those guys got there. I just uh, respectfully, I don't know if anyone has traveled this path. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. From a standpoint of not having bas not having football as a uh, start as a stepping stone moving into the you know national football league from a college perspective and being able to do the things i mean i had to put in so much work with so much help it wasn't just me so uh i think that's the part that's frustrating yes because i know so, to get to that I, level it takes luck and inability yeah last one brown we gotta go hey what no luck involved, brother. I hooped against you at Forest Ranch when Eric Weddle had the okay. game. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we I, know, yeah. I know you can hoop. I've seen the athleticism. Uh, I felt the physicality from a basketball standpoint mm -hmm. in person. So, yeah. first of all, congratulations to you because you're going to get in. I'm not going to down somebody Thank else you. to lift up somebody. So, I'm not worried about whether yes. you'll get in or not. I just want you to know that the city of San Diego, the community, absolutely appreciates you because when that's you were right. here, you were present in the community. Yep. And that's why you got that's so that. much love and support here, man. Yep. Regardless of what, Thank you. you know, for whatever reason you didn't get in, the day will come because yep. it's old to dude, you, man. The so, fan base, the fan base was absolutely pissed off yesterday, dude. Right. It yeah. was pissed, man. Because we loved you, man. Yeah. And, and dude, that smile, yeah. that smile, that personality, <laughs> yeah. the production, we loved you, man. And you know that. You know that. I, I do know that. I do, man. And I appreciate it. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we got what eight more months, right? We, we you know, make a run at it again. You, know? <laughs> you got time. You time. got time. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Antonio, I know yeah. you got a hustle, man. Hey, thank you. You are welcome here anytime, man. We would love to have you I back, dude. It, man. Yeah, for sure, man. I, I would love to be back. So, okay, man. Yeah. Appreciate you, dude. Right. And congratulations right, on yeah. that nomination. Right, You'll get in. Thank right, you, man. Guys, there he is, man. Antonio right. Gates. Brown, you, tell me, I, Brown, tell me about playing against Antonio Gates in Eric Weddle's basketball <laughs> league. I don't know about this. So. At, it, it was a, when I lived in Forest Ranch, they have a gym, they have a community center, like down at the bottom of the canyon. Mm -hmm. And it was him, Eric Weddle, mm -hmm. one of Eric Weddle's uh, buddies, and then a couple of other guys. I knew Eric Weddle's buddies with this other guy and another player, but I didn't mm -hmm. know who he was. Mm -hmm. And Antonio Gates. And so uh, I played in the same league as them probably two times around. So which is like maybe 25, 28 games. So I played against him like five or six times. So mm -hmm. I'm well aware of whether he could hoop or not because I'm always skeptical. Did you dunk on him? Like, oh, this guy played basketball. I'm yeah, like, yeah, dunk. right. I played basketball. Did you dunk on but that fool? Could hoop. Yeah. Hmm? Did you dunk on nah, dunk on that fool? Nah, he wasn't. Or did he dunk, dunk on you, Garnett style? No, 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 listen, listen. He ain't played no defense. He could hoop. He was athletic. <laughs> he could score. But for that specific reason, he ain't playing no defense. Because if I'm him, I'm not going to get dunked on by some dude in the rec league. 
not happening. Because when people saw him and Eric Weddle, people went at them. Like, oh, 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 Antonio Gates, Eric Weddle, I'm going to hoop. They, they knew what they were up against. So they shot more. They shot a lot of threes. They were there for cardio to keep other skills sharp because it was helping them on the, on the football. Boy, I'll field. tell you what, man. That's dangerous, dude. That's dangerous. If you're an NFL football player and you're playing like rec hoops, Against during the season. Want to during the you? season. Come on, during the season. During the season. <laughs> oh damn, I didn't know during that. During the season. Thursday nights. Oh, they're Thursday out of their, Those guys are out of their minds. Hey, I'll tell you guys. Um, you know this whole Hall of Fame thing, and I, I'm going to just address all the San Diego Charger fans. Whether you're still a Charger fan or you've become a Charger hater, or it doesn't really matter. If you were an old school San Diego Charger fan, you loved Antonio Gates. See, the thing yeah. was back then. It, it, it was it was very different, meaning like the Padre players on Sundays would all come to the Charger games and they'd have tailgate parties and we would all tailgate together. It wasn't like it is now where the players are kind of like, hey, you're the media. Hey, I don't want to be around you guys. Dude, I'm telling you right now, we were hot boxing in freaking RVs with all the Padre guys back then. OK, and then coming out baked out of our faces and drinking beers and everybody was part of a community and the chargers were very much that same way. Um, when I would say to the chargers, Hey, I need, I want to spend 30 minutes with Antonio Gates. I want to do an interview with him for TV. They go, great. We'll set it up. And, and that was, there was a community. It was, um, it was close knit. You know, you, you mentioned Eric Weddle, uh, whether it was Weddle or Merriman or rivers or breeze or any of those guys back then, Jamal Williams, how many times did we put on these crazy ass shows at the House of Blues when they were when we were hyping them and we were getting this city going crazy and the players all showed up because they all wanted to be a part of it? You know, uh, Kasim Osgood used to run to the West End Zone at Qualcomm Stadium where it said great friends on Section 15. Fat Tony was there and he was kind of the leader of that group. And Kasim Osgood was on the radio show all the time because Sim would jump into the stands because he knew that those were his people. Those were the great friends. We had a sign at that West End Zone that said LaDainian Tomlinson MVP, and it was blasted all over TV all the time. We were, I'm telling you right now, it was different. We were, we, we had close-knit relationships with those guys, including Antonio Gates. So, again, I think yesterday the conversation, I, I have to admit it, I, I was too emotionally invested into Gates' career to understand that the national media might look at Gates and go, did have a steroid suspension. He never won a Super Bowl. He, the, the deepest he ever got was an AFC title game, and he was unproductive in that game because he was hurt. So all the numbers, and you can tell me he revolutionized the position all you want to, Big Mouth, but the fact of the matter remains, um, he got popped for steroids, and he never really won that much. And as Gates said, and I think he says it correctly, proudly, hey, nobody ever had to do what I did. Nobody ever went from undrafted free agent to being a starter and not even knowing, no, forget football history. How about just football now? Like, how do I play the game? I had no idea what I was out there doing. No idea what I was doing. And that's how desperate the Chargers were back then, that an undrafted free agent in his first year coming off a basketball court could start for them. That's how bad they were in those early days. So he's right. No one has had to have the journey that he had. It's just unfortunate that the national media – Looks and you know what we're going to do next week? We're going to get uh, James Lofton, himself a Hall of Famer, himself a San Diegan, himself who was a coach on that San, on those Charger staffs. We're going to get James Lofton to tell us what happened in the room when everybody is making their case for the different players. Who made the case for Gates and who was opposing Antonio Gates going to the Hall of Fame? We're going to get James Lofton on next week to have that conversation. Shout it's out! Very to fascinating. That guy. It's been a very fascinating time on social media for us too because. Uh, Scott, you're obviously known as or you are the the the, the card carrying member, Charger hater, right? Mm -hmm. So when we posted the clip saying that Gates is not getting in, and we reported it as facts, the Charger fan base got pissed off at us like we were hating. But it's like if you watch the video, and if you watch us talking about him, the three of us agree. Like he is a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. We yeah. were just reporting the fact, and it's it it, it really is funny to see the fan base be like, you guys are stupid. Like, you guys are crazy. How is he not going to get in? There was mm -hmm. such a sentiment that Antonio Gates was a lock. I told you guys yesterday, NFL.com wrote an article. He was number one as a mortal lock on NFL.com. 
mm-hmm. he was going to get in. It's just been I honestly I would love I would want to hear what James has to say because I yeah. don't know why he's not but in. But this is this is why I this is why I have such a strong belief that it was the steroid pop that kept him out cuz there's no other metric that he did not meet to get in. Again, Andre Johnson got in. Yeah. With play on Here's the, the Houston Texans. Yeah. Yeah, what did he win? Yeah. Nothing ever. Patrick, Patrick Willis got in, and uh, the three of us were like, ah, he was great. Right. He played what, five years? I, I don't right. know what he played. I really don't know how many years Patrick Willis played, but Patrick Willis, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't feel like he had like the same kind of length of career or impact that Julius Peppers had. And Julius right. Peppers, I, if you put that back up on the screen for a second, Julius Peppers, yeah. I remember when we first started the conversation, it was like, ah, you know, and then and then I didn't realize the numbers. I mean, the, Julius Peppers yes. had incredible numbers. Andre Johnson, I, again, I remember us having the conversation earlier this week, and I was like, oh, you know, really good player, but, I mean, I don't really think of him as being, like, anything that great. And I'll tell you this. So one thing, um, as a kid, when I was a little kid, I was probably How 8, little? 9, 10 years old, like really little kid. Baby Scott. Yep. My parents moved us from New York to Denver, Colorado. And, I mean, I'm a little kid. This is the late 70s. And I, the gas station? Uh, my dad owned a Texaco gas station. Yes. And so um, I, I really wasn't a football fan yet by seven or eight years old. Um, if anything, I was a Jets fan because my dad liked Joe Namath. So now we moved to Denver, Colorado. Again, this is probably like 1977, 1978. The Denver Broncos are the hottest thing going. And by the way, Denver doesn't have a baseball team. They don't have a, a basketball. Oh, no, no. The Nuggets were there. Um, the Colorado Rockies hockey team was there. They became the New Jersey Devils, and there was no baseball team. There was a minor league team, but the Broncos were it. So as I, a kid, I got into football through the Denver Broncos, um, and the Broncos were really good back then. And Lyle Alzado was a star of their defensive line, and Craig Morton was the quarterback, and Haven Moses like lived in the same neighborhood kind of thing. This is when football players weren't making very much money. I remember going to a mall as a little kid wearing a Denver Broncos jacket, all shiny orange, 1970 style. And the guy who was there signing autographs that day, and I asked him if he would sign my jacket, was a guy named Randy Gratishar. And Randy Gratishar made it into the Pro Football Hall of Fame yesterday. And in his career, that guy never missed a game. And I'm not exaggerating like as in, yeah, that guy was always available. I mean, he never, ever, ever, ever missed one game in his career. And there was another guy that came after him named Carl Mecklenburg, who really it was Gratishar that kind of laid the groundwork for, you know, just kind of a standard middle linebacker white guy. And there was nothing special about him. That guy just showed up to play every single day. So as a little kid, I walked up to Randy Gratishar. He was signing glossy eight by 10 black and white pictures. And my dumb question was, how come you make every play? Like, you know, just stupid ass question. A little kid would ask. And then he signed my jacket right over here, Randy Gratishar. And I'm just my, my first like football idol. You know, made it into the Pro Football yeah. Hall of Fame last night. That's cool. Did you guys notice, like, Antonio realizing he had to answer the question Yeah, a lot of times today? Yeah. Like, today, we were his first interview today. Oh, really? And Yeah. And it's coming. Yeah, he's, on fr- yeah, he's, like, he, friendly, he sat- he's in friendly waters here. Yeah. Right. Right. And he sat here, and he was like, I think he even said it, like, I have to answer that question all day today. Yeah. Like, why didn't I get in? And it's yeah, you it, it's funny you put you put your your resume your LinkedIn page and everything says yeah hire this guy, and and they don't, crazy, I know it's hey, really but I, too bad. but I'm uh, I he will get in he will he get will. now next year's class next year's gonna be tough why who's in next year's class Eli Manning is it Tom Brady it's not is Tom Brady already no is it, pay, is no, it no, Peyton? No. Peyton no it's Eli, Eli Manning Eli Manning Eli Manning that's right. I've read, Eli I've read Eli. Yeah. Eli Manning's in, and there's a, I, I saw a couple of he- other headliners. I went, uh oh. But yeah. if he gets in in that coming. class, right. If he gets in in that class, because I think one of the greatest discussions about the Hall of Fame will be about Eli Manning. Because his career is not impressive, but he did it for the Giants, and he won two Super Bowls, that's and right, he had right. moments in those games. Right. So that's, right. that's going to be the driving force of why he ultimately gets in. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at I'm looking at this right now. Model last Manning. night, Browner. How so? For Hester, did you pop I had a, a, I had a little, You're like I my had boy a got in. 
I had a little yeah. some. I had a little some. Yeah. I mean, I knew he was getting in the previous day because the reports, but we were I'm told. Looking yeah. at, I'm looking at some. Uh, I'm looking at some names: Eli Manning, uh, Luke Keekley, the linebacker, um, Marshawn Lynch, um, and that's Terrell, who the other person. Terrell Suggs and Darren Sproles, Rich. Joe Staley, um, Clay Matthews, uh, Ryan Khalil. I mean, there, there's some names here. So, mm -hmm. all right, listen, stick around, everybody. Um, let me just tell you, since we're talking so hyper-local, my guy, Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299. If you're thinking about buying a house, let's talk to Gary at Mountain Trust Realty. If you're thinking about getting pre-qualified so you know what you can afford, let's talk to Gary Cooper. If you're thinking to yourself, I don't have the cash to put down for a down payment, but I hear that there are other options, let's talk to Gary Cooper. 858-376-1299. MountainTrustRealty.com, or for those of you watching, you can click that QR code. All right, Alex is on Radio Row. Who knows what else is going to happen here today? Everybody stick around. This is Kaplan and Crew from the 7 Mile Casino Studios. All right, great friends. Hey, uh, halftime update. Here goes. So um, this weekend, what do you have planned? Uh, obviously, we know what you're going to do on Sunday. But on Saturday, you might be out looking for open houses. If you would like to go see some open houses, let's go to mountaintrustrealty.com. Let's see what Gary Cooper has available. Or let's call Gary and say, Gary, what, what do you got, man? Let's go out there and look. I'm looking in this area. I'm looking for this size. I'm looking for this price range. Or maybe you want to talk to Gary about, Gary, can you help me get pre-qualified? Can you help me know what I can afford? Uh, hey, Gary, I keep hearing now's the time to get in if I can because the rates are still high. They're expected to come down and my prices will come down. Talk to the professional, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Realty Services, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299. And uh, let's discuss the reality of home ownership, not just the dream or not just thinking that you can't. Let's discuss reality with Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Realty Services. Want to mention one other thing, our website, kaplanandcrew.com. Everybody loves the Kaplan and Crew hoodies, okay? I, I can't get enough. I love them. I saw my girlfriend earlier this morning. I got to her place. She was wearing hers. Um, they're cool looking. They're comfy. They're cozy. They're warm. All you have to do is go to kaplanandcrew.com, hit our merch shop, and get the hoodies, the long sleeves, the tees, the hats, the coffee mugs, the fanny packs. I always tell, tell you guys this. We don't do this to make money. We don't make very much. I mean, pennies. What happens is you order the company that we work with, they print, they ship, and then we get a couple of bucks. We're not doing this for money, which even if we were, who gives a shit, right? But like the reason we're doing it is because we want you guys, we need you guys to be brand ambassadors, to be out there on the streets, rocking our gear, spreading the word, whether it's radio, TV, YouTube, uh, audio podcast, we need you guys to continue to help spread the word as we grow the show and grow the show. Um, and that's really all I got to say. So let's get back to it. Hey, great friends. It is Friday afternoon. It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We come to you from the 7 Mile Casino Studio, 7milecasino.com. Hey, listen, if you're a, a 1090 radio listener and you're just getting with us, I want to tell you what you've missed so far. And I'm going to implore you to go back to our YouTube channel because we had on comedian Burt Kreischer, who was amazing. We had on Antonio Gates talking about how he did not make it to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Also incredible. Uh, so those two interviews from Radio Row are going to be plastered all over our social media and all over our uh, YouTube. And if you're just getting with us on radio, you're going to have to go back to YouTube and watch those. Now, Alex, I want you to know that my son, who uh, at 23 years old is like Burt Kreischer is his favorite, favorite, favorite comedian. He told me, he goes, Dad, you don't have any idea how big of a deal it is that you just had Burt Kreischer on. He said, you've got to plaster that all over social media. you got to cut it up into clips for YouTube because you've got to take advantage of the fact that he's got such a huge audience. Dude, you uh, doing tequila, or excuse me, vodka shots with Burt Kreischer is hilarious. Um, yeah. Him telling us the story about how he became the shirtless comic is hilarious. And his advice for Browner about getting up on stage every day is brilliant. So those are three clips off the top of my mm -hmm. head that we got to we gotta distribute that stuff. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I already know I'm clipping me and him taking vodka shots together. By the way, <laughs> oh, I don't like vodka. That was delicious. 
whatever his brand really? is also yeah i don't drink vodka never have mm-hmm. very good very yeah. very good it went down yeah. smooth might be because i'm still drunk but it went down smooth maybe and then yeah. uh the uh the whole thing with gates today and you know look mm-hmm. gates comes over to us and gates knows us and he knows he's in friendly waters and him having to answer he's the question the- of what's what's he NFL doing network right now oh he is Answering those questions, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Same questions. Hey, dude, do you think it was the it was the 2014 suspension for steroids as to why you didn't get it? I'll tell you one thing we never got to with Gates. You know, if if Gates, uh, and I I don't remember what year it was. I'd have to go back and look. The Chargers opened the season at home against the Cowboys at Qualcomm Stadium, and Gates did not play in the game because freaking AJ Smith essentially wouldn't let him play in the game. There was a contract dispute and a contract negotiation. And and A.J. Smith put a a line in the sand and he said, if he's not signed by this day, he's not playing. And he wasn't signed by that day, but he was signed and he was ready to play against the Cowboys and they wouldn't let him play. They essentially suspended him for standing his ground to get more money. And I don't remember every last detail. Some of you who are watching or listening are going to remember and you're going to hit me up with the details and that's cool. Um, and, and for those of you that are, are like Charger fans now that hate the fact that I'm a Charger hater, and yesterday when I was saying Gates is not making it, guys, I said that because he told us that. He <laughs> freaking told us I'm not making the Hall of Fame. And I said yesterday, I hope that what he's doing is he's setting his expectations low so that when he gets in, he's like, oh, I, well, I didn't think I was getting in. I, well, I didn't think. And boom, he gets in. He's like, oh, my God, I got in. But he told us because he knew already he was not getting in. And it sucks. And I think a lot of Charger fans are offended like I know I am. So, anyway. Yep. Uh, Bert Kreischer, yep. Antonio Gates on earlier. You should definitely go check those interviews out. Now, Grande, you have mentioned a couple yes. times so far today that you were out drinking till 2 o'clock last night. And we asked you yesterday why you're not staying for Friday night to go to Magic Johnson's party, to go to uh, mm-hmm. Shannon Sharp's party from the other night. And you're like, no, man, I'm coming home. I'm coming home tonight. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. what happened last night in Vegas that had you out partying all night? Uh, well, I have a cousin that lives here, and um, he he texts me uh, about two o'clock yesterday. He goes, "Yo, PM or AM? Let's get PM, PM. We okay. finished work, and and he was like, "Yo, let's get together. Let's let's go to dinner, and let's see what's up." And I was like, "Well, I'm going to the Sphere to go watch this movie, Postcard from Earth." at 4 30 and then let's meet up and so i went to the sphere um by the way if you go yeah. to that movie mm-hmm. it is false advertising because the ticket said 4 30 but it started at 5 30 so i got there <laughs> i, I have got a question there early yeah we have a question we yeah. had this whole argument yesterday about the guy who climbed the sphere mm-hmm. did you like go stand next to it and go how the hell did, did. you do it okay what ha- what did you come up with it's even more impressive. It's even more impressive because it, it arches out. So he had to right. basically like go upside down first and then go around it. But what and about when be, you're be, there? Yeah. No, what's up? Well, besides going, besides that circular thing where he's upside down, what about what yeah. did he climb on? Like, what is he hanging it's on? All, to? It's all lights. It's all the lights. It's like, oh, so panels, it's like, okay. Lights. Yeah. Well, however they built it. I don't know. I didn't, they, they obviously. There was a lot of security now, <laughs> so I didn't get too close to it. But you could see that there is some 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 actual structure to it. It's not just lights, but yeah. I mean, I was right. I was probably right where he ran up. Do you think I could just, climb it? Zero chance. Really? You don't think an athlete like myself could do it? Uh, you know, maybe triathlon, Scott Kaplan, but mm-hmm. LA Cap, no chance. No. How about Browner? Could Browner climb it? <sighs> Even less. Okay. All right. See, Browner, that's what makes I'm it that much gonna, more of an impressive I'm accomplishment, my man. I'm not even going to entertain this ridiculousness of whether mm-hmm. or not I could climb a ladder. All right. It's not a ladder. Stop it. Kick rocks with that conversation, bro. Listen, listen. I could climb listen. the thing. You sound two, crazy. Two of the three of us have been to the mm-hmm. sphere. Mm-hmm. And the one mm-hmm. person saying, oh, it's easy. I can climb a ladder hasn't been here. Okay, so tell me about so, the tell me about the film because this will take us in a whole different when you, direction. When you go, when you go, bro, you'll see, you'll see. Yeah, it's a ladder. I it's a ladder. Climb a ladder. No ladder. Ain't no ladder. Ain't no ladder, dog. No. What what's All the right. what's the film that it's you know that jungle? In? You know when you go to the park? I got kids. Okay, damn what y'all talking about now. I got kids <laughs> at the at the jungle gym. 
in the park. There's a globe. No, okay. no, wrong. No, no, no. no let me no, finish. This hey, way, you know, this way. Right. No, you're wrong. Cool. You can go whether you go from the bottom to the circle or from the top to the bottom. It's a circle. Are you really? They got are you really, park. Are you, you really comparing a children's, a child's jungle gym to the sphere? Yeah. Are you really doing that right now? Handles are the same, brother. Handles Rigby, same. write it down. Rigby, write it down. Handles are the same. Right. Write it down, Joe. Write it down. You climb it. Jungle gym is as easy. You know, the <laughs> sphere is as easy to climb as the jungle gym. This yeah. guy goes to the north. This guy goes behind the observatory in North Park. He climbs a little triangle thing. He goes, oh, I can climb this. Done. Sphere. Get out of here. Done. Get out of here. Done. First of all, first of all, there's, mind, a climb, there's, a, there's a climbing gym right off the 163. Go, go try it. Go try yeah, you been? Yeah, you been? Yeah, go, go, yeah. Try go do yeah. it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah going straight yeah. up. Straight up, yeah. Go, yeah. go try it. Yeah. yeah. All right, listen to me. Let me ask you. It, it goes <laughs> out like okay. that. If it, right. a, climb, an un, a guy who doesn't climb like you wouldn't know. Okay, how about you? How about a guy that climbs like you? I told you. I did. All right, I'm, I'm in. Right, I'll this, take guy can, this guy can freaking climb free solo. What's it oh, called? Yeah. Capitan? Yeah. This El guy Capitan. can do it. He, he got it. Yeah. No problem. Brother yeah, got no that problem. Hey, so tell me about the movie. What What's the movie? So it's called uh, Postcard from Earth. Mm -hmm. And what it is, uh, the, the director of, um, I said La La Land yesterday, but it wasn't. It was like the director of like the fighter. And he's he's got a really good resume. So he made this movie uh, specifically for the sphere. And when you walk in, it's just a square or a rectangle of like a normal movie theater. And you're like, all right, whatever. And then it's this, the, I don't want to spoil anything in case anybody comes, but it's basically like, hey, we, we destroyed Earth. So now we got to get on some ships and go live in space. But before you wake up, your memory, because you've been asleep so long, has been altered. So let the computer tell you, this is where you're from. This is Earth. And it takes you through earth it takes you through the deserts it takes you through the jungle it goes underwater it goes through cities um it, it honestly dude it was like the best episode of planet earth you can think of wow i, I was completely sober yesterday yeah completely and i was like almost emotional wow. at the movie yeah wow. uh, yeah it was like you you get to see all these like because it's it's like you're there. I don't know how to describe it. Like you, Scott, you said when you two played, you know they 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 showed like the strip, right? And it felt mm -hmm. like you were outside. Yeah, it felt like you were in India. It felt like you were in Korea or Tokyo. Like it, it was really really cool. It was wow. It was it was amazing. You know what you should have done before you went yesterday to the Sphere to see this film. Mm -hmm. You should have gone to Tori Holistics. Or yeah. California Holistics. You should have used our promo code Better Bud. You should have gotten yourself into the right frame of mind. And then yeah. you would have been in a whole different level. Listen, guys, mm -hmm. this weekend, you got the Super Bowl going on. It's Sunday. Hey, listen, if you use cannabis for sleep, great. Sleep well on Saturday night so you feel good on Sunday. If you use cannabis for pain, that's so they got plenty of products there for that as well. If you use cannabis for recreation, that's on you. Um, your, deci your decision. Use our promo code BETTERBUD. You save 20% whether you're in-store or if you are getting it for home delivery. Use that promo code BETTERBUD. You spend $75 or more and you get 20% savings at Tory Holistics and California Holistics. Um, okay, so while you were at this film yesterday yeah, in Vegas, guys, I was in LA all week because of the lead-up to this Kobe Bryant statue unveiling yesterday. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Um and I showed the video yesterday of how LA Live was completely fenced off and you couldn't get in and you couldn't see it. And then because of the rain, the Lakers had set up this big tent so that the only people that were going to see the unveiling were the people that were inside the tent. And Brownery, this would have been right up your alley yesterday, man. This was oh. everybody who is like a star in basketball. I mean, and I say really LA based or Laker connected. That's who was at this event yesterday, you know, and they put on an amazing show to unveil this Kobe statue. Now, what surprised me was, and I guess I, I just don't know why it surprised me, that rather than um, nobody showing up because you couldn't see it, mm -hmm. I'm not joking when I tell you guys, the streets, there were thousands and thousands and thousands of people on the streets. There were cops everywhere. 
there were people wearing Kobe jerseys and Laker gear and the bars at LA Live, people were lined up outside. It looked like Mardi Gras. It, that's how many people were on the streets of downtown LA yesterday just watching. They, they, they couldn't see the statue. They couldn't get into the tent. They weren't there for the game last night against the Nuggets. They were there on the streets shouting, Kobe, 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 just to watch the 35 or 45 minute television presentation. I was, I was blown away by what I saw yesterday. And I don't know, man, I'm not so sure why I was shocked because other people were like, yeah, of course, of course, this is all these people showing up for this thing. But the, the city of Los Angeles, Kobe Bryant is the son of Los Angeles. Period. End of story. There is no other athlete that ranks above him in Los Angeles. And I'm including Magic Johnson in that. There's yeah. no there's no player, I would argue, there's no player of any team, with the exception of probably Michael Jordan, that resonates with the city like Kobe Bryant does with Los Angeles. I, you you find me an athlete. Tom Brady is not as entrenched in, in, in Boston as Kobe Bryant's name is in Los Angeles. It is it's a beautiful thing. It's it's remarkable. I love it. I think that anything there's no slander on Kobe's name. People reserve love for LeBron because somehow they believe it's a knock on Kobe Bryant. Like they don't play with Kobe Bryant in LA. They but don't. You know what's amazing about what you're saying is that uh, like you, we had Antonio Gates on earlier today. Gates doesn't make it into the Hall of Fame today. Probably, you're probably right because of the steroid suspension. Mm -hmm. No one thinks back to Kobe Bryant and goes, but you know, there was that time in Eagle, Colorado, and it and it wasn't like in the offseason. It was in the middle of like the season in the playoffs. I mean, he, he was, was still hoping. Dude, he was leaving court in, in Colorado to fly on a private plane back to LA. And, and as 40. I and I as I recall, like get to games late sometimes. Getting forward, yeah. you know, and 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 nobody talks about that, which is fine. I'm not suggesting people should. I just remember it was such an important part of of his life. And to your point, Browner, about him being the son, he showed up at 18 years old. He bombed away in the playoffs, threw up a bunch of air balls, and everybody's like, "Kid, what are you doing? Why are you throwing mm. those balls up? Who who are you, kid? You know, that was and me. You, and you, me too. And you <laughs> saw that failure. And then you saw the success, and then you saw the personal drama, like like Tiger Woods had personal drama. You saw mm -hmm. Kobe have to live this out. You saw mm -hmm. the whole case get dropped. You saw the impact it had on relationships um, with him and his teammates and, and the community and so on. And then you saw him rebuild the Lakers post Shaquille O'Neal. And, and then, you know, you saw his last game ever where he went off in that game. And I don't remember, was it 60 or 61 points, whatever the, the final tally 61. was in that game. And you saw his final game. And so again, like with Antonio Gates, I was like, dude, I'm emotional about your career. Cause I saw the whole thing. That's how LA feels on, on steroids by 20 times, a hundred times. What you're describing is you also, uh, you're also throwing in championships, championships right? <laughs> Five they of them. Watched, they mm -hmm. watched him fail spectacularly as a man. Not as a basketball player, because this what happened to him was very public. And the city of Los Angeles stuck with him through that. And after that, he gave them championships. Like, the relationship that, that Kobe Bryant had with the city of Los Angeles is something you will rarely ever see from a professional athlete in this day and time. Because of what Patrick Mahomes is doing, that may be the next version of it. But it won't be like this. But it's also Kansas City versus L.A. You know what I mean? Like, so you're talking about the market is also bigger. The market is also correct. the biggest, sec second biggest. So, yeah, Mahomes is a legend in Kansas City forever already. But it's Kansas City. Right. You know, it's not Southern California. And as right. someone that grew up with the Lakers and seeing Kobe his entire career, you guys are nailing every single point. And I will add this, the fact that he did it with Shaq and without Shaq mm -hmm. elevated him to yep. like beyond legendary. 
for me because yeah. let's not forget in between those years he wanted to get traded to the clippers yeah he, he demanded a trade like he was fed up with the organization the organization listened to him they got pal gasol and they ran it you know back to back yeah. to back they didn't yeah. win the three but they went to three in a row mm-hmm. and i the Dude, the fact that he won it with Shaq, that there was beef. And as Laker fans, we were basically forced to choose Kobe because he yes. was here. And yeah. Shaq bounced around like to yeah. five, six more teams. Mm-hmm. So we were forced. We were like, all right, we're team Kobe because he's our guy. And, I, and he's demanding a trade and he doesn't want to be here anymore. Yeah. But yet the Lakers listened to him. They got pal and he did it again. Dude, I and was team Shaq. Water, dude, dude I, w- I was team Shaq, and I'll tell you guys right now. When, I wasn't. Shaquille, when Shaquille O'Neal was in New York City, and he had the microphone, and he was like, and he was singing that song, uh, Kobe, tell me how my ass tastes, right? Like, mm-hmm. we played that over and over again because I knew I was team Shaq. Then there was, um, when Kobe came back from Colorado, he had this press conference, right? And he he's sitting next to his wife, Vanessa, and his like makeup for what had happened was to buy her this massive $4 million diamond yeah, ring. I mean, and I remember the press conference because he was like sitting there like trying to, to not be emotional, but he was still a kid. He, he was still in his like 20s, you know, mm-hmm. and he's sitting there like, oh, my God, I made a mistake. I, I banged this chick in the hotel. My wife is now having to sit here. She's a young girl. Right. And, yep. he, and he sat there and he's like smacking his lips. And we cut the vid- the audio from I love my wife. I love my family. And then we cut it. I love my endorsements. Like we teased him because for me, I was team Shaq, you know, but what he did to your point, Alex was after that, he rebuilt the Lakers and he became one of the greatest champions of all time. Phil Jackson told such a great story yesterday where he, he brings Kobe to his hotel room and he's like, Kobe, listen, I got to tell you about how you have to play in this system. Right. And he goes, Kobe, don't you, don't you want to be the captain one day? And Kobe's answer was, man, I should be the captain right now. (laughs) <laughs> and it was just I, I i mean listen it's it's tragic and it's sad that he was not there for this statue unveiling but his wife telling the story about how he had already picked out what he wanted it to be and then where i got super emotional was um when she talked about tattooing the children's names on his arm um a couple of them weren't even born when that play happened what the 81 the 81 points and I just remember us, the four, the three of us, four years ago, being in Miami when all this was going down. Mm. And I remember my daughters like crying to me, Dad, you need to come home. You need to come home. I'm like, what's going on? What's wrong with you guys? And they're like, this Kobe thing is messing with us. Girl dad stuff. I mean, it's just, it was an emotional day yesterday. And I'll tell you, man, the, the fans of LA, I got to give you guys a ton of credit because um, I had, I was just, I was just flattered, frankly, to be involved in all of it. So. That was cool. Way, and you know, Vanessa saying that he picked the he picked the statue and it was commemorating like his eighty one point game. Yeah, yeah. She was like, "You're gonna like it, tough ass." So yeah. it was cool. It was really cool. Yeah. And uh, you know, you're gonna get mad about a statue, right? Get, get, out get out of here. Get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get out of here. Come on, man. Come, come on. on. Come on. The guy who's mad about the statue is also mad about Taylor Swift being on TV at the game. <laughs> like, come on, guy. <laughs> come on, guy. That's a, that's a special place reserved for y'all. Get out of yeah. here. Come on, guys. get out of here. Go Come back on, to Twitter. Man. Hey, um, coming up, we're gonna make our pick. We're gonna make our official pick on the game. Uh, Alex is showing us. Alex statue. is showing us the statue. Great statue. And by the way, I mean they nailed it because you know his left arm. Um, he he's wearing a bandage on his left arm. And and when I saw the video of that night, I mean it, they just they got it. I mean really right it. on. And I'll tell you, man, the game was emotional last night. It was packed. Uh, there was a buzz, and and they lost, and and you know they they, they had always it. lose in those jerseys. They did it in the bubble. They're like, oh, we're gonna wear Kobe's jerseys to clinch the finals. They lost, those except jerseys that one game. Anthony Davis lose. hit that three, <laughs> that that three point shot that Anthony Davis hit. I think against Denver, by the way, in the bubble. All right, stick around. We are gonna give you our official final pick for the game, and we expect Akbar Baja Biamila to stop by. Stick around, everybody. This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Hey, great friends. It's Kaplan and crew. It is Friday afternoon. Got Grande and the Brown Man. Grande's on Radio Row in Vegas. Browners at home base operating this whole thing from North Park. I have gone from playing LA cap to SD cap. And Akbar Baja Biamila is going to be here in just a few minutes. Um, You know him from his days playing at San Diego State. Played a bit for the Chargers, for the Raiders. Um, He's probably most famous now for American Ninja Warriors. And he's even on the CBS morning show, The Talk. I don't really ever get to see that. 
but I know that he's got something cooking there too. So uh, Akbar should stop by. And it's been a little while since we've had him on the show, which would be really cool. Hey, um, guys, before we get to our picks in the actual game itself, which is not something we've been discussing all week long, um, anybody see NFL honors last night? Alex, I know you said you were out and about. Brown, did you catch any of that on NFL Network? You I it? did not. Yeah. There was one part of NFL honors. I, I mean, I generally liked it. It was okay. Um, but there was one part. I don't know the host's name. I don't remember the guy's name. Um, he's a comedian, but I don't know Trevor his Noah. name. No, no, not Trevor Noah. Bald-headed, light-skinned black guy. I don't know his name. He's pretty funny. He's okay. I thought he was all right. Um, but Tommy DeVito from the New York Giants. Talk about getting way too much publicity. I, I got it. It was a bit of a story this year. Undrafted guy, lives at home with his parents, winds up starting for his hometown team. And and the guy, the host, whatever his name was, sits down Keegan next to Michael him. Key. You don't know Key and Peel? Though. No, I wouldn't have known that was his name. I wouldn't have known that was his name. He um he sits down with him and he goes, man, this is such an interesting story. I mean, you living at home with your parents, man, that's funny. And Tommy DeVito, what do you think Tommy DeVito says? Mm, I don't know. Funny how? Mm. Funny how? I'm, well, I'm funny. Fu I'm here to amuse you. No, you said it. Like just leaning like, into it, huh? But no, it was terrible. It was awful. Like you would have thought that somebody would have sat down with him and made him watch Goodfellas over and over again. And go, no, no, no. You got to get into it, man. It was so not funny, and he's <laughs> such not a story. Like, I, I'm not trying to knock the guy at all. Sounds like it. No, no, no. It just was It, it was a terrible performance by the kid. He's probably 22, 23 years old, and he's this <clears throat> undrafted guy, and he played in a couple of games. I don't know, man. I just thought they made way too much. There were a lot of jokes about Tommy DeVito, and I'm like, did I miss something? Like, was this a big, big, big story this year? The, N the NFL dropped the ball. On what could have been an amazing comeback story. Instead mm -hmm. of giving the comeback player of the year to a guy who physically died on the field, they gave it to Joe Flacco for coming back and winning a couple of games. <laughs> now, look, I, I like I, how you just said coming back and winning a couple of games. <laughs> I, I, I get it. That, you know, Joe Flacco played excellent, his play on the field was excellent. I'm not questioning that. A man died, okay? Died. Heart stopped. But, but no, no, I totally, on, I totally but, disagree. Totally hold disagree. On, hold on. Hold on. Okay. It's okay. okay to disagree. It happens on this show. It's part of the stick of it. A part man of what? died. Part, part of the what? The stick. The stick. The stick. The what stick. do you mean? The stick. The stick. Oh, okay. I you didn't know what you meant. Listen. Listen. Okay. listen don't listen. don't be using Yiddish words on me when you don't know what listen. they are, bro. It's part of the program. It's okay. Oh, it's part the of the stick. program. Part of the stick. Got it? Part of the stick. Okay. Yeah. Part the of the stick. stick. Okay. Part of the stick. Man dies on the field. Comes back, plays in the game. Plays multiple barely, games. Barely. Barely. You can wiggle your hand all you barely, want. Barely. Barely. He died. Did he barely die? No, he, he no, was he, like he died, dead. died. He was dead. Right, right. He died, died. Okay. Right. Did but he, he didn't did play he, play. He only single play. I mean, bro, let me ask you a question. Tell me one play. Tell me just to, I'm off the top of your head. Tell me I got one, one play. I, got one. I do too. I do. I do. I do too. I got one. He tell me the fake. Tell punt. me the fake. The fake punt, punt that was ridiculous. He didn't, <laughs> they didn't make it. Yeah. But I guess mean, what? What? A dead man. Yeah. Is walking. Yeah, but you said you said the whole time he should never come back and play. I so guess what? It, so you know what he did? He came back and didn't play. He came back and didn't play. He did play. He played, he did play. He played two. He suited up for two regular season games. In November. Hey, Brown, In a listen. playoff game. Brown, listen. You know me. I, DeMar Hamlin, I'm happy as hell for that kid. He's a University of Pittsburgh football player, and I'm and I'm partial to him. Um, but what he did was, is he was brought back to life, and he came back to his team, and he did not make any sort of contribution, positive or negative. And so, what you you have to award him because he came back from death? Well, let me ask you this question oh, hypothetically. Let me ask you this. <laughs> but let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this. Let's just say hypothetically, he broke his leg really, really, really badly, and they thought, you know what? Um, we think Joe we're going to level leg break. Right, right. And he comes mm -hmm. back the next year, and he has the exact same year that he did. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't death, but it was he'll never walk again. But he comes back and he plays in two games. Listen to me. This is just my own opinion. A comeback player is a guy who comes back when he wasn't good or was kind of written off and contributes to winning. Joe Flacco did that. 
Akbar's here, by the way. Okay, good. Akbar's here. Good. I, and by the way, this is an ongoing debate. A lot of people feel the same way you feel, and most people don't have the guts to say what I'm saying. My man died. Okay, My he man did die. Y'all tell Horrible. me about Flacco threw a couple passes. Get out of here. Hey, man. listen. By the way, I'm as annoyed by the whole Flacco thing as you are because Kevin Stefanski won Coach, coach of the, of the Year, year in your and this face. fool and this fool fired his entire offensive staff. In these your people, face. These are the people that supported you, and you have the comeback player of the year, and you and you and all your coaches leave. He looked at you guys suck. Get out of here. I did this. I'm yeah, coaching I know. Talk here. about like ego. All right, hold on. Akbar Baja Biamila is here. Gosh, I haven't seen Akbar in ages. Good God, man. Akbar, what is up, my brother? How are you? Wait a second. We got to turn your mic on. Alex, we got to turn Akbar's mic on. Uh, that or it got unplugged. Is he something. I don't know. Alex will fix it. He got it. Here, no, he, he'll get it. This is what happens on Radio Row. <laughs> Akbar. Akbar's snapping his fingers. Hello. Yeah, I know snap. There he is. Hey, hey Akbar. There, there you go, man. How are you, brother? What's going on, man? How you been? I'm good. Man, good. your life is good, man. You, you got a nice little setup. I don't I don't think I've seen this setup before. Well, you know what, dude? I go back and forth between this is my house here in, in North San Diego, and then okay. I go schlepping up to L.A. every week to go work at ESPN in, in downtown L.A. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, so like you, man, I'm freaking all over the place. Although you're more over all over the place than I am, but yeah, well, I, I was mean, playing... that's a hundred mile. That's a hundred mile difference between North and, and, and downtown, man. Oh, dude, it, t let me tell you something, man. I leave. I left here on Tuesday. I was there Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday. I was at that Laker uh, Nugget game last night. I was there for the Kobe um, ceremony. Oh yes, and yes, then, yes, yes. And at six o'clock this morning, I left to downtown LA to get back to San Diego. It's almost like San Diego is my vacation home for the weekends now. <laughs> it's turned into it sucks, a vacation man. home. Hey, I never got a chance to see that because I was out about working yesterday. Um, I didn't get a chance to see the uh, the, the, the the statue. Which statue they chose? Um, yeah, you gotta you gotta let me know what statue. I would I wish I was there for that for that ceremony, it, man. It, it was it was a statue that Kobe chose himself before he died. Um, oh, wow. it was when, it was when he was walking off the court after the 81 point game and he had his hand up in the air with the number one sign. I and, was at and, that game. Oh my god. And Vanessa, his wife, said, she said, if you don't like this this statue, we don't give a blank because Kobe picked this one out himself long before he died. Um, wow. I know, emotional, right, dude? Oh wow. Yeah, you know what? I, I think that makes sense because it also will tell the story of Kobe Bryant. It has a story. That picture is the picture that he had, you know, when he scored the 81 points. Who forget that? I mean, right, that's, that's a big game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really was. Um, Akbar Baja Biamil is here. Dude, I'm telling you right now, I haven't seen you in so long. I, I, in fact, I feel like the last time I saw you was at a San Diego State football game still in Qualcomm Stadium years ago, and you, me, and Kirk Morrison took a picture. I mean, I'm like, that's how long it's been. Dude, I'm so happy to see you, and, and I'm so happy for all of your success. Would you, before we talk about why you're you're working Radio Row, how did you go from yeah. Charger and Raider and and listen, you know, it's like people talk about Greg Olson, right? He wasn't a big star, but he was the number one guy on Fox. How did you go from being a good football player to getting the gig over at American Ninja Warriors, which has turned you into a big media personality? How did that happen? You know what? It, it was kind of what I call the backdoor um, approach. And it took a lot of people to help and believe in me along the way. But the short of the story is, you know, I think people know that I did not have a big football career. And so, you know, typically, you know, the, the jobs in sports broadcasting was reserved for those who played in the playoffs, Hall of Famer, all those things. And so I needed to create an opportunity for myself. I graduated from San Diego State. I got a degree and communication with an emphasis in new media studies. So I always knew I wanted to do this. And so I just had to create that opportunity. Uh, shout out to, you know, in San Diego, the late uh, CSPs who gave me an opportunity to come on his show. And then mm -hmm. it was NBC 739 who mm -hmm. I walked up to, to their studio and said, hey, my name is Akbar. I played for the Chargers and for the Aztecs. I'd love to do the post game show for free. I ended up doing that for two years for free working on the repetition, getting my kind of my internship in after I got done playing, that then led into me doing college football, calling college football games as a color analyst. That then led into me then kind of giving up on my career and selling turf uh, for, for sports fields. And then I got out of that and got an opportunity to audition for fantasy football at the NFL Network. 
I did that for almost uh, a decade. But the year after I got the NFL Network job, American Ninja Warrior called me in for an audition. I got it. And then that just took off and has created so many different opportunities to what I'm doing now on the talk as a host on the talk, a new show on Roku, Fight to Survive. Um, and so to be spread across NBC, CBS, and Roku, it's, I mean, I knew I wanted to do this, but I didn't see and envision that it would work out like this for me. So it's been a massive, massive um, surprise, but blessing as well uh, to, to be able to, you know, formulate this. Yeah. There's yeah, so many, plat- there's so many platforms out there for guys to kind of find a way post-career. Do you, yeah. do you find yourself counseling guys or giving guys direction about the best avenues oh, yeah. to go down to try to, to try to do something post-career? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny because I do have a lot of guys reach out to me and I'm super gracious with my time because I saw it modeled for me with Michael Strahan, who allowed me to shadow him when he was doing, you know, Kelly and Michael and Good Morning America. And he's like, man, nobody's ever hit me up uh, to, to do that. And so I flew out, you know, went to his penthouse, then followed him around and gone from one place to the next place. And I was like, you know what, man, thank you so much. And then took the time after the show to kind of walk me through, talk me through it. And I was able to then to build from there. And so I wanted to be able to share that love because that was, he didn't have to do that, right? I mean, his schedule is busy, like it's crazy busy, but he did that for me. And so I want to do the same thing, you know, but the funny part is, is that typically when guys are playing, that's the time that they should be taking advantage of it. But a lot of times Hmm. guys don't want to hear from it. Uh, hear about it because they think it's somehow settling for being out of the league, but it's going to happen to everybody. As great as Michael right. Strahan, as great as Brett Favre, at some point you're going to leave. And so sometimes you get into guys who go, I got it all figured out and they don't want to hear from you. I'm like, man, it's all good. When you're done, I'll be here waiting for you to help you out. If you ever need advice, I'm here to help you. Yeah. Why do you think uh, it's harder when they're done? Why do you think it's harder post career than it is trying to get in while you're doing like what Draymond Green is doing? Draymond Green has yeah. pretty much worked before TNT while playing in the NBA. Why do you think yeah. it's easier to be active and doing it? Be- because you got the juice. Like if mm. you're playing, you have you you kind of have a key, right? People want to hear from you when you're playing. But the truth is, once you get done, it's just a lot harder to get in mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you know you don't have the same type of you know, um, uh, equity, right? People, ah, oh, you used to play, nobody, I mean, I'm telling you, two to three weeks after you're done playing in any league, the same <laughs> phone calls you used to be able to pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to do X, Y, and Z. Ah, oh, you need to talk to my assistant. People don't treat you the same way. And it's, yep. I mean, it's kind of the the the, the, the jock sniff uh, syndrome, right? It's like, mm. when you're hot, everybody wants to be around you. When you're not, people treat you like, ah, oh, yeah, maybe, so why not utilize that platform when you have it? It's transactional. Oh, People are totally. like, hey, you're hot. I'm like, hey, look, I want to do something and think about my career afterwards. But most guys think I'm going to be doing this forever. And so right. they tend to not take advantage of that platform. If you've got an idea. I'm telling you, I've told every player this. While you're playing, I guarantee you, find an interest that you are. Find a leader in that business. I don't care who it is. And say, hey, and call the, the, the phone and Say, I want to talk to the CEO of fill in the blank. I'm a current player. I guarantee you get that meeting. I no doubt. guarantee you no get doubt. that meeting. Now no they doubt. call that same person and say, hey, I used to play for, like, yeah, talk to my assistant. Yep. You're, not, you're just not going to get the same type of response. Right. We're talking to Akbar Baja Biamila. You probably know him best from American Ninja Warriors. But for those of us that know him from his playing career, we followed him at San Diego State. We followed him with the Raiders, with the Chargers. Hey, um, I noticed, though, that you're doing a lot of what I would call inspirational talking on Instagram. The stuff that Browner's asking you about, you know, like kind of spreading the word to younger guys. um, I think that's awesome that you do that because there's a lot of people that know you. You've gained a lot of fame. I am curious as though you mentioned talking about to Michael Strahan. Not everybody can pick up the phone and call Michael Strahan. How did you do that? I mean, was it maybe? It was a cold call. You you remember I told you I was, um, you know, in between before I got into NFL Network and Ninja Warrior. There was a period in my time about a year in 2011 where I was selling artificial turf. I had gotten out of broadcasting because it wasn't working. I wasn't making, you know, any real money doing it. I had to support a family. And I'm like, hey, this is not working out. I didn't know Michael. I never played with him. Never played against Michael Strahan. I didn't even know if Michael Strahan would even know me. 
I knew he would know my brother, but he didn't know me. So I picked up and got his number from somebody, called him. Mike returned my phone call. Like, you know what I mean? He's like, absolutely. I'll help you out. No problem. I, it blew my mind. You know what I mean? So, and that's when our relationship started is when I reached out to him, a cold call. But maybe God puts things in your life for a reason. And the ability to be able to take a no from cold calling, say, hey, uh, I'm Akbar Baja Biamila with Hellas Turf. Um, do you want some turf? No, get out of here. Stop calling. <laughs> You know what I mean? So it was not a big deal for me to call a complete stranger. Uh, that's an awesome story. Uh, so, Akbar, I'm curious. Uh, you know, you've gained all this fame, like I mentioned. Uh, you're walking around there, and people don't know you as a football player anymore. They know you as a TV personality. What do you uh, What do you got working on Radio Row? Uh, right now, I'm, I'm out here supporting um, and have partnered up with Experian. Uh, Experian is, you know, they did this massive survey uh, about people who are getting ready to prepare to watch the big game um, and realized that 30% of people don't have a financial game plan. Uh, but 80% of those people are looking to improve their credit score. And Experian has this feature called Experian Boost. Impressive. I mean, it's one of the best things out there. For every for the everyday thing that you do in paying your streaming services, your utility bills, you can get credit for that to boost your credit score. We know right now, cost of living, inflation, I mean, all of that stuff has cost so much money. And what happens when all these things are just constantly increasing with, with inflation and interest rates? You start spending more money. When's the last time you went to go get some coffee? I'm like, man, 10 bucks for, for a latte? Like an oat milk latte, 10 bucks? Like really? Right, things are just getting more expensive. What happens? You start overspending, you start overspending, you start stressing out your credit cards. Your credit cards are, are, are getting close to getting maxed out. Before you know it, it's impacting your credit score. Experience like, let's flip this around. What about getting people credit for doing things that they're supposed to be doing, which is being responsible? They're, they're getting you and boosting your credit score for responsibility, for being responsible. Now they've created this ecosystem with the Experian Smart Money Digital Checking Account that has the Experian Boost embedded within it. So you just start doing the little automatic debits to paying out your, 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 your utilities and your streaming services, and it magnifies your, your credit score with the credit agency, right? With Experian, you're, you're, you're talking credit Experian itself, right? You're doing it with uh, them. So it has been massively popular. This, uh, the, the smart money digital checking account from Ex uh, Experian is new, and it is really going to be a game changer. Dude, I am so glad you're passing this on to everybody because everybody who's listening needs to hear that. And I am not being corny or hokey or just kind of sucking up because that's the sponsor that's got you going around spreading their word. Hey, listen, I know you got to go. PR is pulling you away. Do me one favor. Alex is right yeah. there next to you. Can we, yeah. let, let's get a phone number, an email. We got to have you back, man. You know, okay, San absolutely. Diego loves to hear from you, bro. Yep, absolutely, man. I still got a 619 phone number, too. So I never changed it, even though I went back home to L.A., man. Dude, look forward to visiting with you more, man, when we have more time. Appreciate you, dude. All right, absolutely. All right, man. Akbar Baja Amila, what a great – you know what, man? I'm so happy for that guy. I really am, man. All right, beautiful. I don't know what happened in there, Brown. I don't know, man. People grabbed the mic. That was like Burt Kreischer earlier today. Yeah, have a great All right, watch what's going on. Here, put this on the screen. Look what's going on. <laughs> we'll have our we'll, – we'll do our official pick here during the uncensored portion of the podcast. But, look, Alex is now standing there talking. Look how skinny Alex is, by the way. Dude, look at that. Yeah, shake it out, he brother. Lost it. He lost it, man. He I know he it. did. I know he lost all that weight, man. He did. All right, hold on. We'll have our official picked in the uncensored portion of the podcast. Anybody listening on radio, anybody watching uh, on YouTube, you have to stick around. We'll go uncensored. We'll make our picks in uncensored. Alex, you back with us? Let's see how he. Let's see no, how I don't he does. think so. He said no. no. He, <laughs> he says he's not coming back. He said he want to talk to you. No, he does want to talk to us. It's just that the whole you, mic. Man. Something happened with the mic. I don't know if the the wire came unglued or. Uh, now he's back. Yeah. I think I'm back. Yeah, yeah you are. I, you... I plugged it in and I unplugged it. And no, something... I, I switched it all, but it wasn't doing it. I don't know what yeah. happened. Yeah, I don't know. But you sound great. And he sounded you know, he okay. grabbed it. He grabbed yeah. it physically. Yeah. And it just messed with something. And, it, yeah, and my phone wouldn't connect, so I couldn't even. It was weird. Well, it's, it's busy in here, so. Yeah, well, do us a favor. Turn your computer around if you can. Just like, if you can, show us what's going on there, because we're getting ready to go uncensored. It's all on the McAfee side, again, yeah. like going yeah. that way. 
Fish is busy. I give McAfee I credit for doing uh, for doing Radio Row. Everybody else I see, Dan Patrick, Dan Levitard. I mean, all these guys who have these big national shows, they're like all so anti-Radio Row. Bring everybody to me. And they've got a good crowd. I mean, I see Levitard's got a really nice crowd. I'm like, gosh, that's, uh, that's Yeah, cool. Levitard's got a massive crowd. I didn't know his show was so big. I mean, people love him. Um, I mean, to me, all he does is talk about ESPN. But um, all right, so stick around, everybody. Listen, <laughs> wow. um, well, it's true. It's all I hear. Um, stick around. Let's go get Uncensored. Radio listeners, we got more. Everybody else, we'll make our picks on Uncensored. It's Uncensored, man. It's, it's Uncensored. You almost done. You almost made it through the week, man. You Dude, I, week. Yeah. Me or him? Both of y'all. I, 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 I don't know I'm, how I'm, I'm, I'm wiped wide out. awake right now. I'm I'm yeah. wiped out. Wiped, wiped out. Yeah. I honestly no seriously like I couldn't sleep all week. I don't know, dude. First of all, I'll tell you guys this right now. You're in a I foreign bed a lot. You should, I'm surprised you sleep at all. I can't dude, sleep in a different bed. Dude, I left I left the Laker game last night in the third quarter cuz I was freaking I couldn't take it anymore. I was like I have been at drive it home? for so long. No, I didn't drive home. What I did was I went across the street to the hotel that I stay at and um I got into bed and I turned off the lights probably you know, this is you know, a little bit after the Laker game, I turned off the lights and dude, the streets were bumping. You know, it was, it was a big game between the Lakers and the Nuggets. It was mm -hmm. a big day with the Kobe thing. Mm -hmm. And it, I, I mean, I've just never heard the streets so loud as they were mm -hmm. last night. And I couldn't get to sleep. And then I finally did. And I woke up at like four o'clock in the morning, like I had been for the last three days. And then I at like 630 in the morning, 625, I left L.A. live to drive south. And, you know, the drive was no big deal. I mean, I barely I don't even actually remember driving. <laughs> oh, what? Always I, good I to hear you. Always I don't. I do not. I don't even remember driving. You got um, a Tesla? No, it was my car. I mean, it was just. Oh. I would just. But and then and my left eye is like burning. <laughs> so I'm like a mess. I I'm just such a mess today. But what a great show! What a great weekend! Uh, and I mean, I should say, what a great week, Alex. You crushed it, crushed it. And and I'll tell you guys, I had no FOMO all week until kind of like I'm seeing pictures now of friends of mine. You know, mm -hmm. hey, I'm here with Shannon Sharp or I'm over here at this party. And I'm like, OK, mm -hmm. I have a little FOMO, but not a Dude, lot. The Kobe statue. Not a lot. I have a little, not a lot. That's right. Did I give you FOMO chugging vodka with Burt Kreischer? Um, not really, because mm -hmm. I would not have put my lips on the same bottle as his. Me neither. And I thought that it was cool live, that you did it, though. You you got to, you know, live life, you know. Yeah. You just got to do it. Is vodka disinfectant? Yeah, it's basically rubbing alcohol. Like so. Yeah. Uh, now that you say it, though, like where I mean, Bert's married. You know, Bert's not like you know. Oh married. yeah, no, but you he, know but I mean? I'm just saying, Bert's like how many other people? Around. No, but how many other people have shared that bottle? He went with him? McAfee to here, so it could be oh. McAfee, Bert, and me, and and the people at CHGO because I just saw them on Twitter. The, but did you see the bottle? The bottle was still full. So if yeah. it was yeah, empty, oh, yeah, yeah, it was I would have done the finger thing. You know, I would have probably put my fingers over it. But the fact that it was like he did it and then me, I was like, all right. Whatever. If it was down at the bottom, a lot of people right. would have a drink out of that. But, but tomorrow, I mean, Sunday or tomorrow, if I wake all up right. and there's like cold tours all over my mouth, my, yeah, I fucked up. My son is sending me a video <laughs> of my son is sending me a video of Kreischer. Listen, to this. my son is sending me a video of Kreischer on McAfee. He goes, he gets on the set of McAfee. Mm -hmm. He must have gone back to McAfee after he left us, I think. And he his takes off his on? shirt. He take no, oh, okay. he and he takes his shirt off. And he's down on his knees, and he's going to start doing push-ups. And mm. I'm waiting for him to show us uh, what he's. Yeah, they crashed. They they weren't they weren't scheduled to be because uh, C.J. Stroud is there, and mm. so and, and C.J. And drank out of the bottle I drank out of. I don't know. Whoa. And Kreischer's doing push-ups. I don't know how many he's going to do. He's already at like ten. He's already kind of. He ain't drinking no vodka, dog. You got too many praise Jesus quotes out there in the world. He ain't drinking no vodka on the match. Every every dude got oh, up on Jesus stage drank last wine. night. It's all good. Yeah, oh, Price is doing true. some push-ups. He's doing. He's actually doing good. He's doing good on these push-ups, man. Wait, are you still counting push-ups? I'm not counting them, but he's he's doing pretty good. I'm pretty impressed. I'm doing, he's pretty. He's starting. He's pretty impressive. Maybe he um, just. He's a strong guy. He just doesn't look strong. He well, got he that looks, bear strength. Yeah. Um. Anyway, hey, listen. We haven't made our pick in the game because we got all you know got guessed it out Busy. today. We got guessed it out. Uh, my highlight of the week, I will tell you right now, highlight of the week is Bobby Flay. Um, I on, For a couple of different reasons, Bobby Flay, when Alex blew his mind yesterday, was amazing. Bobby <laughs> Flay being willing to uh, listen to the pitch on the Great Friend Stables, incredible. 
Um, a second highlight of the week is Burt Kreischer giving Browner advice about stand-up comedy. I thought that was, I mean, you cannot buy that kind of stuff right there, right, Brown? I would say second highlight is Alex drinking out of the bottle he drank out of, yeah. and I would be after that. That was super cool, too. Mm -hmm. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I love the week. I do. And I, like I said, I don't have as much FOMO because, um, Alex, everybody's uh, saying to me, Hey, where are you, man? Are you in Vegas? Where are you? I'm like, no, nope, not yeah. there. People have asked me too. Like, where's Scott? Where's Scott? And I was like, in LA. In yeah. LA cap. Be in yeah. LA cap. I know. Home statue. I know. Did you see, uh, did you see my pictures that I posted on Instagram last night? No, but I, I haven't been on Instagram yet, but I'll, I'll check it out. Would you do yeah. that? No, I was just standing on the court, like acting like nobody was taking pictures of me. When oh, I knew everybody were you doing the whole? Did they, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, right. That's so corny. Dad so model, corny. dad model. Oh, and by the black way, and white? black and uh, white. Not, no, 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 no color. But you ready for color. this? Check out the Travis Scotts. I broke them out last night. Wow, I broke out the, in the picture. I didn't see those in the picture. Yeah, check them out, dog. Go to my Instagram. Okay. okay. All right. Let's see. Check out my Instagram, and then we'll make our picks. Tell me what you guys think. And by the way, that was a brand new jacket that Rachel just got me for. Look uh, at you! Christmas. Yeah. Wow. Oh, huh? But my favorite part is that you're standing next to the Lakers' best player, Austin, Austin Reeves. Reeves. Oh. Yeah, I tagged him. I tagged him in it. You tag you him. Tagged Austin Reeves. Yeah. For what reason? Well, so that when he gets his Instagram, he's like, "Oh, somebody tagged me," and then they realize he looks and he's like, "Oh, this guy Kaplan took a picture, and I was in it." He photobombed me. I just dropped the like, bro. Wait I know, go. dude. Dude, I'm just I'm just uh, reposting your tweet where you're, Alex sends a tweet. Uh, how how you doing today? Uh, my day's going good because I'm yugging vodka with Burt Kreischer Ye to the face. Yeah, yugging yeah. it. <laughs> hey, I got to see this film that he was talking about that I don't know about the machine. I don't know about that. What, what's the it's, deal good. That? it's good. What is it? Uh, it's it's like it's like um. Like a basically like a like an autobiographical thing about when he accidentally joined the Russian mob. How, what do you mean that, that like really happened? Like he accidentally joined the Russian mob? I thought this was like a big goof. No, I asked him about it today. He was like, yeah, I know you did, and I didn't, but I because I don't know the but I don't know the movie. Right. So I just played right. along. So yeah, it was good. It was good. It's a good movie. It's short, you know. Uh rated R comedies are very rare nowadays. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to to have a it was it was good. I liked it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. That's cool. And uh, I gotta Alex be honest, doing... you guys know this about me. Like, I'm not a big stand-up guy. I, I it's just not my it's not my thing. I've been to a I lot of stand-up shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like Bert's one of the dudes that I could like watch his stuff and the shit makes me laugh. So all right, let's do this. Let's let's uh let's make our picks. Um our our picks, our final pick of the year. I don't know if we still have our scoreboard. Alex, you had a great, great year of picking games. Mm -hmm. uh, Browner, you also had a really solid year. I mean, certainly I don't have way the, better than 500. I don't have the graphic, but I have the stats in front of me. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, Browner, 33, 29, and 3. Scott, you were 32, 26, and 3. And I was 43, 22, and three. Okay. So we all were, we all were in the money. Uh, Alex had a big year. So I'll, uh -huh. I'll pose it to you, Brown. Um, the Chiefs Niners are one and a half. One and a half now. I should have taken mm -hmm. the Chiefs earlier. What does it matter? Uh, Browner, Niners, one and a half point favorites. How are you playing the game? I'm going to take the Chiefs. Uh, I think if the Niners win, I won't be surprised. But I'm taking the Chiefs. I think it's going to be low scoring. I think this is going to be come down to a last second field goal, 21-24. I think Patrick Mahomes makes the play. I think uh, Brock Purdy has a Jimmy Garoppolo moment, and he has an opportunity to make a throw, and he doesn't make the throw. I know you you just so are rooting against Purdy. That's that's cool. I like where you're coming you from. Doing? I didn't, no, I didn't true. say that. True. I didn't say that. I'm just saying he's going to have a Jimmy Garoppolo. This is the difference between Jimmy Garoppolo staying with the 49ers and then finding someone else. He had a throw to make in the Super Bowl. He missed the throw, and no one stopped talking about that throw he missed in the Super Bowl. Okay. All right, Alex, how are you going to play the game? I have been trying – since I'm not putting money on this, I have been oh. trying to shake no units? my feeling. No units. I, I'm, I'm listening to Craig on this one. I would not touch this game at all. But I haven't shaken this gut feeling in the past two weeks. The Niners will win. And I will take – the Niners, one and a half. They get their first Super Bowl in what thirty years? 
I, I just can't shake that gut feeling, man. I just I, I don't I would never bet against Patrick Mahomes, but I will tell you, I think the Niners are just better. I'm going to I'm gonna just take the Chiefs because I've been saying I'm gonna take the Chiefs the whole time. Here's the thing. I think the Chiefs have the better coach. Not not better because like, you know, not not because you know, Andy Reid is just, you know, this this he's so great, he's so much better than everybody else. You know, and Shanahan is not in his category. It's not that. It's just the the experience factor. I think yeah. coach goes to Kansas City, quarterback goes to Kansas City. I think defense goes to Kansas City, and I know kicker goes to Kansas City. And so when you talk about will Brock Purdy make a mistake as a young player? Will the Niners Rookie kicker, miss a kick in a big situation. Uh, the Niners defense, which I think is a bit overrated. Everything just tells me just take Kansas City. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to do. And um, I'm not going to put many units on it because I don't feel overly confident in it. I, I do think it's a toss-up game. Just yeah. like I kind of thought last year was a toss-up game, but Kansas City came through. I'll take Kansas City to win. I'll take the point and a half to cover. Brian, you took the point and a half too? Yes. All right, there you go. Well, okay. Since I've been right all year, all year, I would assume on Monday that I'll be right again. Yeah. Although I've had the best playoff season, <laughs> I think. I, last week I was three and one, or two weeks ago in the uh, division round I was three and one, and last week in the championship yeah. round I think I was two and zero. Oh, so. Yeah. Me and you picked the same in the championship, but you did have a better wild card weekend than I did. I think you were undefeated wild card, and I went right. five hundred. So. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, uh, Alex. Just outstanding job, man. Just incredible job, job by you. Job. And, and Browner, by the way, great job by you too, man, because, you know, you had to slip over and, and, you know, take over what Alex does. Great job by you. And to everybody who watched all week and everybody who listened all week, man, we appreciate you guys being here. And uh, we'll all be back on Monday to review what happened on Sunday. Until then.